Hey guys, welcome to DaVinci Resolve 18 tutorial for beginners. This is a fast but comprehensive tutorial for anyone who's just getting started with DaVinci Resolve 18. It took me a long time to put together, so watch it from start to finish. And this is really going to teach you a lot of things, especially if you're transitioning from Premiere Pro. Okay, let's get started. First, just make sure that you are in the edit mode, which is this third tab at the bottom. This is where you edit your video. On the left hand side, we have a media pool, which is a collection of resources that you want to use for making your video. To import a video, simply drag it from your file explorer into your media pool. To import audio file, just do the same thing. Just drop it into media pool. And if you move your mouse over the video, you'll see its preview in the main DaVinci player. And in the same way, if you move your mouse over the audio file preview, you'll be able to see its waveform and play it in real time as you drag your mouse around. <laughs> okay, if you don't see your media pool, just click on this button over here. Now here you have your main video player view where you can go to the first frame, play the video in reverse, stop, play, and go to the last frame or play the video in a loop. And on the right hand side, you have Inspector, which is a tab that allows you to change position, zoom, rotation, or adjust volume of whatever you have currently selected on the main timeline. Your main timeline where you do all of your video and audio editing is this long bar at the bottom. Okay, I'm going to drag my video out into my media pool and then usually what you want to do is drag it directly onto the timeline for editing now that the video is in the timeline press on the play button to play the video and stop to stop okay in this next part of this davinci resolve tutorial for beginners we're going to take a look at how to actually edit video and audio on the timeline on your timeline the video part of your track appears in blue and the audio track appears in green if your video has an audio track they will be attached together by default with the linked selection feature to detach your audio track from your video track select the track and click on this chain button now select the video part and drag it around and you'll see that it moves independently of its audio track okay you can change the color of each track first by clicking on the track going to inspector going to file and here selecting the color and in the same way, I'm going to select the audio track and change its color. However, for this tutorial, I'm going to set it back to default color. To attach your audio track back to the video track, just select both of them and click on the chain button again. Okay, in the next part, I'm going to show you how to cut your track into separate parts. With your video clip selected, click on this razor blade button your mouse turns into razor blade and you can click anywhere on the video to separate it into multiple parts. To go back to selection mode, just click on the arrow again. And as you can see, you can move each part independently of each other. You can also select multiple parts and drag them around. Let's try to delete just the audio track. Click on audio track and press delete button, but you'll notice that both tracks are deleted. Instead, right click on the audio track and click cut. This is just one way of removing audio from your video track. Now to add music, soundtrack or just regular audio speech to your video, find the audio file you want to add and drag it directly onto the timeline. You don't even have to drag it into media pool. One less known fact about the Northern Lights or Aurora Borealis is that they can be accompanied by a distinct sound which people in close proximity to the lights might be able to hear. Okay, in this next part, I'm going to show you how to work with audio volume. Select your audio track, go to audio tab in inspector. Now let's focus on this part for now. To increase or decrease volume, just drag this horizontal bar up or down. Now hold the Alt key and press anywhere on this horizontal bar and just keep doing that. 
to add more dots. These dots become volume controllers that you can use to change volume anywhere on your audio track gradually without affecting the master volume of the entire audio track. Okay, now to fade in your audio at the beginning of your audio track, hover your mouse over the audio track and drag this corner. Now you can also move this middle dot to make the audio fade in gradually with a curve. In the same way, you can also fade out the audio at the end of your track. Now, the white peaks are the waveform of your audio track. To hide audio waveform, click on this button and click on this button to switch the waveform on and off. You can also change volume in Inspector tab. Just click on the audio track, go to Inspector and drag the volume controls to increase or decrease audio volume of your track. This panel also has options for changing speed of your audio and the equalizer. Now I'm going to decrease the height of my audio track and I'm going to mute my audio track by pressing on this small button with the letter M on it. Now I'm going to click on my video track once to select it and go to inspector, click and hold on the zoom value to either zoom in or zoom out of the video. Here's what it looks like and to reset it back to 100%, click on this reset button. Now we're going to animate zoom as the video is playing. So go ahead and click on this diamond next to the zoom level. This orange diamond is a keyframe and every time you press on it, it creates a new keyframe at the current playhead location on your timeline. Play your video for as long as you want the zoom effect to take place. Now go back to zoom controls and change the zoom again. Now play the video again so we can progress to the next position on the timeline and now drag the zoom level back to about 50%. Now rewind the video and play the video. Now the zoom will animate between those keyframes we were placing and adjusting along the way. Now you can add keyframes for position of the video, rotating, and any other transform under inspector view to animate them dynamically as the video is playing. To remove keyframes from the track, right click on the track, click remove attributes option, and on this window you can select which keyframes you want to delete. Here I'm checking rotation, angle, and zoom. Click apply and all of your keyframes will be cleared out. To flip the video vertically or horizontally, select the video track and click on the flip button here or another button next to it to turn it upside down. Now I'm going to show you how to select everything to the right on your timeline. So let me first split the video into multiple parts using the razor blade tool. And let's say you worked on a project for a bit so you have some of your video clips on different tracks. Now, let me just show you Premiere Pro for a second. Here I have a very large project, which is actually this tutorial you're watching right now. Now, in Premiere Pro, you have a special button here, which is the Track Select Forward tool. Press and hold and select Track Select Forward tool. You can also select backwards, but we're going to select forward. Now, with this tool selected, simply click anywhere on a clip and you'll be able to select everything to the right and drag this new selection so you can open up some space at a specific location in your video. Now, going back to DaVinci Resolve, and it doesn't have a button for doing something like that. Instead, what you want to do is move your playhead to a certain location on your timeline and press Alt-Y on Windows or Option-Y on a Mac. This will select everything to the right of your playhead. Okay, here some of my audio track got stuck, so I'm going to cut the audio track using the razor blade, then select everything to the right again and move this entire block. Now, there are times when you want to crossfade to different video to create a gradual transition from one video to another. And just like the audio track has volume controls, video tracks have fade out controls in the upper left corner of the track. So what you want to do is align two different videos like this, move the second video on top over here, and by dragging this fade out controller, move it all the way to the beginning of the second clip. 
Now do the same thing with the second video. And now when you play the video in the DaVinci player, you'll see this gradual crossfade between two videos. You can control the length of your crossfade effect by aligning the videos again and adjusting those controls. So here I just created a much longer crossfade effect. Now there's a second way of fading between two videos in DaVinci Resolve. First, make sure you have your videos on the same track. Now go to the effects tab over here and under video transitions, find dissolve effect. You can move your mouse around on the actual tab to see the preview of that effect. Now go ahead and drag and drop that effect on the first video at the very beginning. If you play the video, you'll see this transition, which fades in the video gradually at the very beginning of the clip. But if you drag the same dissolve filter to the second clip, it will automatically create the fade in and fade out effect between the two videos. To control the timing of this dissolve effect between the two videos, all you have to do is drag the second video into the first one and adjust the crossfade angle by dragging the second video's effect to the right. So here again, we created a much longer crossfade effect between two videos using the crossfade effect in DaVinci Resolve 18. Now to record audio from your microphone over your video track, go to the Fairlight tab here. This is DaVinci Resolve audio controls. The first thing you want to do is go to DaVinci Resolve option here and go to preferences here. Click on video and audio input output tab. You might not have your microphone selected by default. So just go to this drop down and make sure that your microphone is on the list and you can select it with your microphone selected. Click on the save button to add a new audio track. Right click here, go to add track, select stereo or mono, and your new audio track will be added in Fairlight controls. Now using these player controls, press the record button. Now at this point, if your microphone is not recording on the second track, to enable your mic, go to mixers tab over here. For the second audio track we added, click on this no input button and go to input option. Now on this window, just click on all of the rectangular buttons here. First one, second, and the other two and click on the patch button. Now click on the mixers tab again to exit and you can close this window as well. Now on the track, click on the R button to arm your audio track. And there you have it. As you speak, you will see these bars show up on your audio track. Now to record audio over your video, just mute the original track, arm your microphone and press the record button. Just start speaking. And this is how you record audio over your video in DaVinci Resolve. Now I'm going to exit Fairlight and go back to our editor. I'm going to delete the audio track we just recorded by clicking on it and pressing delete key. Now, before we export our video, I'm going to show you how to change aspect ratio or resolution of your video. In the lower right corner, go to the project settings button. Now here you can select a new resolution for your video by clicking on the drop down and selecting one of the presets. You can also choose width and height of your video individually by entering values into these boxes. And you can swap the width and height to create vertical portrait view for mobile phones. But in DaVinci Resolve, it's even easier. Just check this checkbox here that says use vertical resolution and your video will be cropped to vertical mobile phone resolution in portrait view. So now all you have to do is go to save a button. And as you can see, our video is now ready for exporting in a vertical portrait mode for mobile devices, which could be Instagram posts, TikTok, or YouTube shorts. Now I'm going to show you quick export to MP4 format. Just go to quick export button here, select target platform or encoder like H264 or H265. Click on the export button, select the location on your hard drive, give your video a good name and press the save button. DaVinci Resolve will start exporting your video to your hard drive at that location.